Hello, this is Dimitri with uh, U-Gears US. Uh, today we're going to be doing a new model. Uh, it's a model Wolf 01 handgun. Um, just received it in stock, uh, start selling it. Um, and uh, this is one of the simpler models, so I'm going to do this one next until moving into more complex models. As I mentioned before, I'm going to try to do the videos of everything that we sell, uh, but it's coming slowly because some of the models do take a lot of time out of the day to put it together. Um, so uh, let's start with this one. Uh, it is uh, retails at uh, $24.90 on our website. Uh, as I mentioned, we just got them in stock. Uh, it's actually pretty cool. I've seen it in action and now I'm gonna try to assemble one myself and as always go through some tips, tricks, um, this one's got a 60 components, uh, so it's uh, pretty easy, should be easy to assemble, should be pretty simple. Uh, according to the manufacturer, it takes about an hour for the assembly. Uh, so let's see what we have inside the package. Do you have some rubber bands? Do you have two plates? two boards and instruction manual. So we don't need, uh, there are no toothpicks in this model. And um, although there are some pictures of it shown here. So first let's go through the regular warnings um, and uh, legend that you might see through the manual. Uh, first one here, it's uh, that we need to, if you see the little toothpick with the candle and the uh, gear, uh, we need to wax the parts. Uh, for that, we just use a regular tea candle. Here I have one available. Uh, if you see the exclamation mark, that uh, you need to pay attention uh, to make sure that uh, certain parts um, are inserted properly or whatever the reason is, maybe mirror, image, um, but you might see those uh, throughout the instructions. Uh, freely moving components, that's a little fan with the errors there. Uh, sand to remove the burr, uh, sandpaper. To remove the burrs, I use for that purpose, I have a, a precision file. Uh, you can use sandpaper. Uh, another good tool is um, just a regular nail, uh, nail, nail filer, also work. And um, I do have also exacto knife to cut some components out. And uh, the last uh, legend uh, symbol is uh, the location of the additional parts. So um, here on the uh, picture on, the, on that page three shows the location of those additional parts uh, with that symbol. So if we look at the boards, uh, there's a board number one and no board number two. I'm holding in my hands board number two and you got some additional parts. It says 24 plus right here. Uh, then there is a little space right here. The parts have the plus sign next to it. So that means it's additional. And then on board number one, there is a, uh, let's see right here, 26 plus and 15 plus. So you have a couple of those extras in there just in case if you break them during the assembly or after the model is assembled and operational. Uh, also, don't forget if you break any other parts, components, uh, just send me email. Uh, as long as the part was purchased from me, I will send it from a US warehouse, uh, which takes about three to four days for the delivery. I will need the picture of this little distribution sticker on the back of the box. Uh, just to prove it that you bought it through me or one of my affiliates. Um, otherwise, I will order the part from the manufacturer, which usually takes about a month for delivery, or the uh, small expedited fee. Um, I can ship it from my warehouse. Um, so there's going to be only shipping charge. I don't charge for parts. Um, for that, just send me email at uh, info at uh, ugears us, or you can go on my uh, website, uh, go to info support and find the information there under part replacement program. So let's go ahead and continue with the model. Um, we're going to start, we need a board number one, so I'm going to put two aside. And uh, step number one, we need uh, part number, uh, let's see, three, four, and five. 
So let's look for those um, on the board. And here's the part number three. Um, another tip, hint that I usually provide is that there is a front face on the board and there is a, a back face. Uh, so we usually push from the back towards the front, that way the burrs, little fibers will stay on the, attached to the part and will they peel off the board. If you try to do the other way, uh, it's gonna go, they're gonna peel off the part and it's not gonna have a nice look. So once again, we go from the back towards the front. Uh, usually I look for the connection points and I press down around them. That will, that will help you separate the wood or you can use the X-Acto knife to pre-cut, find those connection points and pre-cut them. Uh, so this is, uh, let's see, part right here we can remove. And um, the parts that I'm removing from the components, from internal part of the component, I will um, do it from the other way. I'm do it from the front because you don't want you want the bigger piece to stay intact, or in this case, the fibers will pull peel from the wood that you don't use. So here you go. This is also part, uh, which is number ten. So make sure you don't throw it out and keep it intact. So we're gonna have this, and then we need numbers fours and fives, uh, which there's a number fours and five. I just pulled out these guys. So we need one four. I'm gonna pull it off. So once again, it's uh, if you're okay, you can push it out with your fingers, or you can use exacto knife, like in this example. I go from the front face, I find the connection points, and I kind of just pre-cut them a little bit. And then when you try to push it out, it will come out much easier. So that's uh, two ways to push the parts out. Um, another way is to use um, any helper tool. So you could use another piece, uh, um, the component or the part that you use already, and you just push it out, um, kind of put a pressure across it. Uh, so number five goes with a slot. Uh, I guess in the vertical axis, insert it into the left hole. Then uh, goes to, there's two holes right here uh, towards the center, so you go to the bottom one. And then number four, you go the one all the way on the right. And so and. See, so you push them all the way in, and then in this case, I'll use the these boards to help me a little bit to push it out. So try not to break them. But I'm assuming the tight fit is that it does need to stay together. Uh, so uh, we do need to use a little bit of sandpaper. In my case, I don't have it. So um, I'll try to use the file. Good thing I have a flat first portion on it. So I kind of send down the surface here just to make sure there is no burrs because uh, that's going to be against the moving component. So all the way around the trigger opening right here. Send, send it a little bit. And then use the candle. Um, in my case, I'm gonna use, just peel it off a little bit, put it on the board, and then apply it all around. So as you touch it with your fingers, because it's a candle wax, it's gonna melt down a little bit, but don't melt it too much, or you don't need to melt it too much. Uh, you don't want it to get absorbed by wood. So you want it to stay on the surface rather than get absorbed. So uh, all around the trigger area here. The 
that's where the moving mechanism will be. Now we need uh, part number one, which is the larger piece right here. Getting that I need to keep my hands above the table rather than under the table. Uh, so there's a piece right here and I need to pull it aside. That's number 12, so 10, 12. And then uh, let's see, separate all the other pieces that are pre-cut. Number, so there's number seven here. I still have it attached to the board and then pieces number 29 so now I have <coughs> this part I do need to wax uh, sand this surface and this surface a little bit caliber 1.5 by 60 facing towards you um, see two there's one slot two slots three slots here put it uh, through the parts number two fives and four that you just insert it in there so <clears throat> we're done and then uh, moving on to the next step number three here we look for part number two, which is located also on board number one, right here, that little weird piece. Push it out, looks like it's pretty fragile. So well, just be careful not to break it. And then that one you need to wax this piece right here and this portion. Um, I'm gonna send it down a little bit because there's a connection point here. So you push, put a little bit in here and then uh, use the candle wax to get it on this part on these two little lips and that piece goes with the longer lip towards the top right here into the slots that are pre-cut right for it so you, you won't miss it it's a kind of two round slots I need to wiggle it around to get it inside there and slide it all all the way in now the next step is number four uh, we'll look for part number six which was right next to number two here it's a part kind of like a C shaped I guess with a little lip and um, if you have trouble pulling it out use the exacto knife and that one goes with the slot cut out towards the top. Um, that's the exclamation mark here. And you slide it into the hole. I do need to wax it a little bit on the side. So I, once again, there's a couple connection points in here. So I just clean them off a little bit. Put a little bit tiny amount of wax here. And then, um, so make sure the slot is towards the top. This is facing to, to the right. And we need to insert it into that hole right here. So, and separate the wood a little bit. That's shown on the picture here. Kind of pre-insert it. Move it into the slot. And here you go. And 
then put put the top portion back in. So now that part sits right into the proper location. And then we move to the step number five, uh, where you need number seven, which this piece right here that was pulled off <coughs> number um, one. So we'll separate the board here, and we need to uh, send it down. These two, uh, this long um, stick, boss extension. So there's a connection point here. I'm gonna send it down all around, or the cut surfaces. This and this, and then the back extension. That is a little thicker. So the same thing. There's a connection point on two sides, so I'm gonna send it out a little bit, and we need to apply wax on those surfaces, top and bottom. So see how useful I found this board with uh, part number four in there. Peel off a little bit of the wax, <laughs> and then apply it to both um, extensions on the number seven piece. And then goes, uh, that piece goes right um, with a circular cut out towards the top. It gets, uh, it's, so it's a trigger. So I put it right in um, to make sure that the trigger is right inside the space um, here. And then you can try to move it back and forth and see if it is smooth. If not, there's a connection point on um, little part number two here. So you might wanna Cut those a little bit or work them a little bit more, send them down, uh, connection points on here. So just make sure that you get all the connection points out, that it slides back and forth easily. So we move, in, move up, move on to the next step number five, or page number five, and step number one, we need part nine. So a lot of uh, small pieces here, and nine uh, is on actually sheet two. So we're here on the bottom of that sheet from, push it from the back towards the front. And then we do need to send uh, this surface, this surface, make sure it's free of burst connection points. Candle wax again and apply it a little bit on both sides. That's where the connection points are at, and those are mechanical, so there's going to be movement. We want to reduce the friction. So, here with a little that tip going towards the top, uh, the circular portion fits right into the trigger port apart. And uh, in between that part number two, I believe. Correct. So it goes right in here. Should fit perfectly. <clears throat> then we move to this uh, step number two, uh, where we get part number eight, which is on board number two, bottom right. Push it out carefully. There's some parts that you will need to push out of it. Put the board on the side so you get some additional parts which you can put somewhere on the side because you don't need them right now. Then this uh, little part number 11. So we got 10, 12, now 11. And inside of 11 there is parts number 17 and uh, 18. those out too. I'm gonna keep 11 so I don't mix it up here on the board. Um, so with uh, part number eight we do need to clean off some surfaces so portion right here get the connection out
decided to trigger a little bit. Also, I'd say, uh, let's see, that lock towards you, so that internal surface also, my assumption, needs a little bit of waxing. And then we do need some wax on these surfaces, as there's some moving parts there, so just put a a little bit of wax on the back and that that goes uh, let me see down at the bottom here make sure unlock is facing you that way you're not gonna put it put it in the wrong way and just feed it into the to those uh, uh, parts that what I think it was four four and f or four five and five right into the slot okay make sure that if one of the components falls out put it back in that's the one with the tip going towards the top and I'm gonna press it all the way in to make sure that it doesn't fall out again so just apply pressure from both sides and that should lock the whole thing in place all right already taking some shape uh, now we need to press the trigger and see if there is movement back and forth so press the trigger pull it pull it forward and make sure these components move easily and freely back and forth now we need uh, two more number fours once again, <clears throat> X-Acto knife would be a good choice of tool to pre-cut these a little bit, so it's easier to uh, pull them out. And those go on the bottom here where, where the magazine would be. So kind of from the side. Attach them right, just like this, like shown on the page number five, step number three. There we go. Now we need number ten, right here. Uh, we do need uh, number five. Um, just pull it out. Pulled it out with my fingers. Uh, then we do number 12 component that is also was on the board number one. And then uh, with these little, uh, so number five goes right in here. In the only hole. Uh, then on, right on top you put a number 12. All the way down, make sure that uh, they're all facing the same direction. There's a little tip here, goes towards the left. And then on top of it, you put number 11, also in the same direction. So here's your little magazine here. And it's all completed and stamped number six. Uh, now you need uh, number 14, which is on uh, page uh, or sheet number two. And this is the one in the middle. So I push it out, there's some fly here, um, push it out and then uh, with the gun facing you, the letter R, or to towards the right, the letter R is facing you, uh, you insert that number 14 piece um, where the handle is at, so it's part of the handle. A little tricky on the bottom here because those number fours are not very secured, but they should go in fairly easy. So 
So you and new gears is facing you on that uh, piece number fourteen. We move on, move on to page number six uh, and step one. Um, you wax a little bit these two sides. Easier movement back and forth. Turn the gun around and put the magazine right inside there. Make sure there's plenty of uh, lubricant. Work it back and forth. I think I need a little bit more of lubrication on there. I did kind of put enough, but doesn't look like good enough. All right, one more try. All right, feels a little smoother. And then you secure the magazine with a uh, number 13 piece, which is also on sheet number two. And once again, your gear is facing towards you and you uh, put it on this little tabs. All right, and it looks like your handle is done. Make sure magazine opens. Will be a little bit stiff in the beginning, but then it'll work itself in as the you play with it more and more. So our handle is ready. The magazine is ready. Uh, next step, I'm gonna put this aside for a second. Uh, step number uh, four, on page number six. So we need. Uh, one of the boards, which is uh, number 16. That's the one that with the letter R. Um, push it out and then we need, uh, let's see, parts number five, four, two seventeens and two eighteens. Uh, let's see, 17 and 18, they are And uh, she two, these parts right here, and then four and five, I still have small leftovers. So in here, um, letter R facing away from you, and we need to uh, wax, send, send and wax this uh, surface right here. So I'm gonna use my little precision file. Should have got myself a, some fine sandpaper, but unfortunately I don't have it. So just send it out a little bit, make sure it feels smooth. And then we need, I'll start pulling one by one. So part uh, number five. And goes all the way to the most left hole. Make sure it's seated, fully seated. And part number four, work it back and forth to pull it out. That's the next one to number five. Uh, then uh, two eighteens follow next into the next two holes. And then it looks like there are a lot of connections there, but most of the holes are a little bit diagonal. So you insert the only two that are parallel to the um, other edges. So two number 17s go in there. And now we need to wax uh, the surface a little bit. Once again, make sure the letter R is on the back and then we wax the surface. between the tabs. Now we 
need part number 19, uh, which is also on sheet number two, all the way to the left here. And uh, let's see. <clears throat> so it's a symmetrical part, but uh, make sure that uh, that cutout is towards the right rather than towards the left. So that's the exclamation point on here and you put it on a little number 18s that you just inserted. So that one also needs um, a little bit of waxing on the side. So I'm gonna get rid of the little connection points that is sticking out here, just send it down a little bit, top and bottom. a little bit of a wax to get the surfaces and once again with a little opening uh, towards the bottom right and you just insert it onto the number 18 and then that portion goes on the main assembly from the right side there's a little slot uh, in the front and then uh, all the slots kind of like everything else falls into the other slots which are more open there you go I'm gonna turn it <coughs> facing down and then we need uh, part number 20 which is also number board number two right next to the 16 and that one has a letter L so from the back L facing away from you this surface right here needs a little bit of sanding down and wax so I'm gonna use my file send it down and then grab a little bit of wax and Wax that surface. Um, for the wax, it's just a regular tea candle. I mean, any candle should work. Um, you can also try to graphite, but it has some color to it, so you might not really want to. Um, I have a little bit of wax inside the hole, so I'm gonna push it out. Uh, another one is uh, lip balm should work, chapstick, uh, and uh, other options. I think that's all I can think of right now, but there's some other options out there. There's special wood um, lubricants. So now this L facing towards you, uh, you insert it into the corresponding openings. Um, make sure you match all the holes and it should go all in and you kind of squeeze it from both sides to lock it in place. Uh, so we're on page number seven, step number two. We completed the main assembly. Uh, now we're going into the middle portion of it. We need part number 21. Uh, 21 is located on board number one on the right here so as you can see this uh, handgun is getting very detailed all right 21 so we do need a little bit of uh, I'm not sure why you need a wax there uh, just for it to easier get inserted but I'm just gonna clean off. I'm not gonna skip the waxing on there a little bit. I'm gonna clean off the connection points. So it just looks nicer. Then 
it's going to be sitting against against the stationary part here. So you do need to wax the bottom surface, I'd say. Uh, let's see, so. Gun facing you. Um, this little tab, T-tab towards the back and this opening towards right side, towards the back. So then I'm gonna um, wax a little bit the bottom portion right here. Insert it on the top of the gun. That's going in a little bit tough, so maybe that's why they want it to use a little bit of a wax to help you out, but once again, it's, you just need to be careful not to break it. But it, all of these should fit fine into all the slots. Make sure it sits all the way flat. And then the top portion moves back and forth. Now the next step, all the way to the right, uh, we use a rubber band, and it says to wax rubber band a little bit. So I'm gonna put a little bit of a wax onto my fingers, okay, and I sandwich it between the rubber band and run the rubber band through the fingers, or through the wax. So it's a little bit smoother, I guess, to insert. Now you need to uh, fold it in half and push it through the hole right here next to the unlock button. So that's the tough portion. Let's see, I'm going to try. Check a little bit ahead, so. To make sure if I need to fold it or not. It looks like it's folded here, but it's not. So you just push it through the hole. Let's do that first. You just need to follow the instructions. I'm gonna use my little uh, precision file, you can probably use a toothpick from some other kits and um, put the, push the rubber band through that hole, which is probably so far is the toughest task that I have. Make sure you catch it on the other side. Uh, pull on the, uh, so hold the rubber band from the back, make sure it doesn't snip off or uh, slice through and kind of get it onto first a little tab here on the front. I'm gonna move to the next page, number eight. So I'm gonna come back on the side, go into the top hole there with a full rubber band. Push it out a little bit, just like this. So I'm still holding it. Then wrap it around into the bottom hole. Let's see, um, just trying to figure out, then wrap it around again, through the top and the bottom. Uh, exclamation point that you have it correct. Oh. And now I 
need that little opening connected to piece number 22 which probably would have been a good idea if I knew that I had to push it out first now I'll have to figure out how to hold this uh, rubber band so <clears throat> now my 22 is ready and let's see I'm gonna make sure that everything is still connected or the rubber band is pulled around the way it was shown and then I don't think I can pull it that far so you go all right so <clears throat> let's pull the rubber band a little further so pull it out from the other side to create some tension you go through the top hole hold it down a little bit to make sure on the back pushing it through the bottom hole wrap it around through the top again the bottom and then at the bottom hole hold the rubber band use piece number 22 to grab the rubber band with the little two slots right here and I let it go one more time now I'm gonna get very good at it so top hold it down from the back bottom well not all the way to the bottom like the middle one I guess then hold it from the top top portion again middle snapped off so I gotta pull a little bit down so to, to make sure that it doesn't slide off there you go two loops probably gonna break the rubber band by the time I'm done then insert it into the slots on piece number 22 uh, push it back And snap it with these uh, little tabs right into the place now step number three is to make sure the trigger is working so you see the rubber band here let's go back and forth here we go so it needs to work itself in and out a little bit and as you can see, after a couple of movements, now it's trigger releasing back. Um, and it says, uh, you should hear a clacking sound. And it does clack when I let it go. Of the trigger unless they were talking about a different clacking sound which I don't hear anything else here we go Alright, um, let's see, now we're to number 23, and we're going to work a little bit later with 
the trigger. Uh, so number 23 goes on the opposite side and into the um, little slots right here. Let's see what the um, these di diagonal on the bottom right here. So two holes right in the center. My understanding the trigger is supposed to I'm not sure it's supposed to release or not. It does move back and forth as you press the trigger. But I don't hear the clicking sound that they were talking about. <clears throat> so I'm gonna partially disassemble it. And see if anything's supposed to be making a clicking sound. So I'm just remove piece number So uh, I'm going to go back into the instructions and see if there is something that might be making a clicking sound. No. So my uh, wasn't moving all the way back. You just need to work it back and forth a little bit. I'm gonna grab back onto the rubber band and install the 22 back. Now it makes the sound. So just need to work it a little bit. Um, plywood, a lot of friction. So, but now it seems like I got it to work. And that's the clicking sound what we're looking for. So now I can put all the back, oh, all the parts back and come back to the step where we're at. So that's the clicking sound that we're looking for. We're looking for. So we use this back. So all I did is I took off 22 and 23, uh, released the pressure from the uh, rubber band tension, um, kind of worked it in a little bit with the trigger to make sure that it does make that clicking sound. And then now the kind of like reloads itself, becomes an automatic. Now let's see, uh, next step is number five. I need piece number 26 and 15 and 25. So 226 is right here. Um, I'd use the uh, exacto knife, find these connection points. To make sure it's easy to pull out. To number 26 is.
separate them so 26 goes so I'm looking on the left side of the gun um, 26 goes up front two slots there for that the number 15 which are pieces right next to the 26 I'm also going to use the exacto knife for that points are tabs and in between is the uh, next to the tabs so I just push those two out with helper tool or which I mean obviously it's, it wasn't provided in this case but I'm just using my file number 15 goes in the slot right here right above the trigger two holes and then 25s, uh, which are these pieces right here. And then first sheet, these are a little bit larger, so this should come out very easily. We need four of them for this side. And they go with the little flat portion towards the bottom, so they go into these diagonal holes. And make sure you insert them so they're fully seated into these holes and then uh, we do the same thing on the other side so I have to 26 goes to the front Uh, number 15 right above the trigger It just gives us a little accent and then we need four more of the number 25 They'll go into the di diagonal slots in the back Again, make sure everything is properly and fully seated. The gun is working now. And we're at the bottom of page nine, bottom right. Uh, and the last piece is uh, number 24, which is on the board number two. There are two of them together. There's one additional just in case if you break one. Um, once again, I will use an exacto knife. I'll cut one out first. And once you pre-cut, it should kind of like fall out very easily. Uh, that goes on the top. So with a larger piece toward on, on the front and then you can insert it Slide it back a little bit and snap into back opening here. I will use a little bit of a file on top to make it nice and smooth. So we're done with that. Now we're uh, putting together two, three, and four steps, um, little targets. They're on page number, or sheet number one. So it's, this is number 31. 30. We'll make two targets, apples. And then number 32s are on the board number two. So 31, 32 goes where the two little, uh, where, where the um, drawing is. Um, so that would be the front. 32 inserts just like this. All the way down.
one of the old pieces just to help me out a little bit and then number 30 goes into the little slot here so once again all the way down and when you set it it's going to be a little bit under the angle it's a pretty neat target Of the targets, and then one last piece step number five uh, is part number 27 is on board number two. Then we need 28s, two number 28s, and 29s. They're like in the little piece that you had pulled out from uh, one of the handles, I believe. So these should come out pretty easy. I see they are pre cut very well, they're tiny parts, so. Um, Careful not to break them. Uh, so 28, then uh, 27 is the flat portion. 28 goes into the front and back slots there. Make sure they're the same direction. And then 29 from the bottom into the slots. So this little piece attaches to the gun. Um, you can use, uh, get a little, those laser keychains. Um, attach it here so there's a uh, little round pieces here and you can just attach it with a rubber band it's shown um, on the right hand side here um, and then it attaches to the bottom of the gun right here I'm just gonna push it on the pieces there's a plenty of clearance for the rubber bands so it's gonna sit nice and tight on the bottom of the gun. So kind of like a laser gui guidance for you. And uh, that's it. So this is the last page. Uh, I guess it says use only with glazes. A little misspelling there, but it's getting fixed. Um, there is a, a locking mechanism here, so there's a safety. Um, it's right, located right here. When you press down, unlock. From the other side it locks so when you do lock you can press the trigger squeeze the trigger so unlocking position now loading the gun you have uh, plenty of rubber bands let's see i got in my kit one two three four five six seven eight nine so i guess it was a total of uh, ten trigger is going to be plus or minus one or two and then loading obviously it's easy go from the front and attach it to the little teeth on the back starting from the bottom up you can load up to five rubber bands at a time the rest of the rubber bands uh, make sure they're not overlapping much uh, the rest of the rubber bands I kind of actually right here all four that I got left wrap them around so you can use the magazine and put it right in there lock it up so now we have a fully loaded gun, we have a little target here, and then as you squeeze the trigger, I missed it, there you go. Just go through all five rubber bands in no time. So we have fully functioning uh, rubber band gun. Um, make sure you do use glasses uh, when you play with it. Um, Nice, fun <clears throat> little toy. So we're done with the assembly. 
Uh, this was the last of it. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please let me know down in the comments. Um, or you can send email at uh, info at ugears.us. Uh, my website is ugears.us. Um, please check out all other products that we have available. I am working on the videos to have all the assemblies done. Um, so um, they're going to be showing up as I finish them up. Um, once again, questions either below in the comments or info at ugears.us. The website is ugears.us. My name is Dimitri, and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.